So you want to make money by licensing your music to be used in films and TV shows. Now that's smart as it's one place where you can still really make a good income plus recurring royalties from your music. But which style of music should you be writing in to really get your tracks earning a good consistent income? And are there genres which you should avoid? We'll cover these important topics in this video. Whether you're new to this world or just want a higher success rate when you do pitch your tracks to music libraries. Plus, you're gonna hear from an incredibly successful production music composer who will share his advice on exactly how to tweak your style should you find that what you write isn't a money-making genre and turn it into one that is. All this coming up. I'm Michael from Music for Income. I'm a professional TV composer and I also run a production music library. For great insider tips on writing production music for music libraries, TV, film and games, subscribe to the Music for Income channel and hit the bell to be notified when we post a new video each week. Also, if music licensing is something new to you, make sure to watch this video first where I'll explain everything you need to know about this world. So, you're looking to get music libraries to sign your tracks and put them where people making TV shows and other media that needs music will pay for them and use them. Which style of music should you be writing in to be really successful in this area? After all, you don't want to spend all your time and effort producing tracks that never get used. And I'm sure that a load of you watching have experienced sending tracks to music libraries and they just aren't getting signed. So put another way, how do you know if the style you write in is going to stand a good chance of making you money before you commit to writing those tracks? Let me give you three fundamental tips on finding out which style of music you should be focusing on that will make you money through music licensing. And this applies if you're just starting out or if this is something that you have experience with, it might be something worth going back to and checking that you tick all of these boxes with your music. One, know that there isn't one style that is lucrative, there are many. This is good news and important to remember. One of the great things about music libraries is that most of them take music across a whole range of genres. They'll have upbeat, happy acoustic tracks pulling in a good income, hip hop tracks doing well, emotional tracks, big cinematic tracks, you name it. So there are several styles in which you could write, have a music library contract those tracks and do well in terms of the income and royalties from them. There are also stories of people who have signed tracks to production music libraries and made nothing. So how do we stand a fighting chance of knowing ahead of time that we're writing in one of those more popular styles? Well, that leads us on to tip two. Be market-led. When you write music with the aim of making money from it, it's important to remember that you're aiming to serve a market first. This applies to any industry, right? So if you and I were going into business together, doing anything from opening a sandwich shop through to selling pens, we'd be idiots to go into anything without doing our market research. Watch Shark Tank or Dragon's Den, as they call it in the UK, and you'll see the panel of investors wanting proof that there is an established market for the product. Either the contestant has already sold well in a market or the research and known demand supports that it would do well. Making an income from music is no different. If you're not bothered about making money Write whatever music you like, but if you wanna make an income from it, you need to know that there is a market for your music and then serve that market. The better you serve a market with what it wants, the more money you make. But how do you find out 
what music the market wants. After all, music libraries aren't going to provide you with this information themselves as they're way too busy. As somebody who runs a music library, let me tell you, you need to step away from your home studio and start researching. Too many composers just send out emails to music libraries with links to music that they love to write and that may be great music, but do films and TV shows actually use that kind of music? Turn on your TV and see what kind of shows are using what kind of music. Now, it's important to make sure that these are TV shows that actually use library music. So the big area of TV that does that is any kind of reality TV, as those shows rarely have a dedicated composer as the turnaround times to make them are so fast. But it's not the only area. Loads of shows from sports to news to game shows also use library tracks. Check the credits at the end of a show and see if under music it lists companies as opposed to an individual person. That's a good starting point. Three, what if your style isn't popular? So let's say you do your research and you find that the style of music you enjoy the most or are the best at writing doesn't seem to be one used much on film and TV. Does that mean that you can't make money in the area of music licensing? I put this question to music producer Matt Nicholson, which is part of a very revealing long form interview I did with him, where he goes into exactly how he found huge success as a professional composer for music libraries. I'll tell you more about where you can watch that whole interview later on, but let's first take a look at his advice on this point. How do people reconcile what they enjoy writing and what they feel good at writing if that might not be the most popular style for film and TV? Or do you think there is a space for everything? I think there's an opportunity for all composers to find a way of turning what they love writing and particularly if you just break it down by instrumentation, if you find that piano strings isn't right for you, but you love synths and you love using stuff like, you know, the stuff that, uh, you know, like Diva and Massive and these big synthy presets, you can find a space for that in cinematic music very easily. I think if you look at guys like M83, they write very synth-heavy music, all this Stranger Things thing that is now insanely popular. Uh, the soundtracks to Stranger Things is all analog synths. If you love writing guitar music, you can also find a space for that across loads and loads of telly, loads of TV music is guitar-based. So I think there's, just because you happen to like obscure electronica doesn't mean that you can't lend your talents and your skill set into writing successful library tracks. This is great advice. Take the core of what you do well, the DNA of it, if you will, and start finding the closest possible sounding music that you hear to that, which is on TV. Ask yourself, how does your music differ to theirs? What techniques do you hear that you could incorporate into your music to push it slightly more in that direction? So let's recap on these three important things. One, realize there isn't one successful genre in music licensing. There are many, but there are also many that aren't used, which leads us on to point two, be market-led research what music is being used on TV shows right now. Is this obvious? Yes. How many people actually do it? I can tell you from the emails that come into our music library, hardly any. They just presume that they know what is in demand. Three, if the style you write in 
isn't one of these popular styles. Take the elements that you are strong at and move towards the nearest genre that you can find that is heard on TV. It often isn't a million miles away from what you're writing. If you do these three things before you send a single thing to a music library, you will be ahead of the pack. So that interview with Matt that the clip was taken from is a real goldmine of information of how he climbed the ladder to be an award-winning production music composer. And it's just one part of a huge online course about creating library music that sells. And as a thank you for staying until the end of this video, I wanna give you three free lessons from that course right now. These three lessons are guaranteed to make your music more TV friendly and more licensable immediately. So to grab these three free lessons, just click on the link in the description below. You can also check out these other useful videos on library music and licensing your music on the Music for Income YouTube channel. And if you've enjoyed this video, share it with your music producer friends, hit like, subscribe to the channel. I'm looking forward to catching you next time. All the best.